Okay. Uh, today we are going to go on on the classification, but first I will work out the details that I had left yesterday. I, uh, I will tell you what some of the things I left as an exercise. We will do it with details now because this will allow us to understand better the proof of the classification. So in, at this point, we are trying to find a semi-conjugacy Uh, between the, the shift of two symbols and any F which is expanding this degree two. And well, basically what we want, what we want to do is that we have a sequence, let's write it like this. And so we will want, we will only have the following criteria. This is the only key step in the definition of our semi-conjugacy. This is the only thing that we will require. The rest will be just um, given by the fact that we pretend, to, we expect H composed with sigma to be equal to F composed with H. I'll do it in general, but I'll first uh, work out the details for the two for the special case, so this is the only thing that we, this is the definition essentially. We are going to only require this and of course we want this to be a semi-conjugacy and from here it follows the definition. Why is that? Because if we want this, for every x, we want that for every x, then this implies that this is going to be So, at the same time, this is going to be f of this, h of this. We expect this to be f of h of x, but this is going to belong So, if we get all these things together, we will have that H And so, we will have that h of x is 
This is because of this. This implies. But this automatically implies and this in turn implies that Hx but this is automatically this follows automatically from the fact that we ex expect this to happen and expect this to happen. These only two things yield us what is going to be the definition. So just, just requiring that this happen, we automatically have its definition. Well, we have to prove that this is a definition. So first, we're going to do it let me, let me first do it for the 2x mod 1 map, and then we're going to do it in general case. So let's prove first Let us first prove. that this happens, that this is a unique point. And, well, we have to prove that, in order to, a way to prove this is the following, is to prove that this an interval of length one over two to the n plus one. And we can do this by induction. I, I will first do it for two x mod one because this allows us to to, to do it for the general case F. So how do we do this? Well, one way is to do it by induction. Delta X zero is an interval of length one half. Okay, remember, have this. This is delta zero, this is delta one, this is one half. And we can prove by induction that delta x zero xn equals, in fact, k over two to the n plus one, k plus one, two to the n plus one for some k and that f rest e2 to the n plus one. Uh, I have this some dyslexia with if this is n or n plus one. Let me let me put it like this, then we will check. That this restricted to the interior of this set is injective. So we can prove this by induction. If this holds for n equals zero, this is for n equals zero, zero is uh, yes, it is n plus one. For n equals zero, this holds. Okay, we have that delta x zero equals k over two 
k plus 1 over 2 for some k, and also that E2 restricted to the interior is injective. It, it takes the interior into, not only it is injective, it is injective and it's, it equals S1 minus one point. It takes, it takes the interior of each of these into the whole interval except the fixed point. Okay? So, this is trivial for E2. I'm, I'm doing a lot of calculations because this will be, uh, this will help us to, to calculate the general case. The general case is not that, that trivial. But well, now assume, assume that we have proven this for some n, assume that this is true for some n, and let's prove it for, for n plus one. Okay, so we have that delta x zero And also we have that this is injective. But since this is injective and takes this interval into the whole circle minus a point, this implies that there will be a preimage of one half inside here. Okay? This implies that there exists some point. Uh, let's call it R n plus one, which is the pre-image of one half. And, and it will belong Okay. But now uh, this is this is injective and we know that E2 to the n plus 1 is exactly 2 This is exactly this. Okay? So the pre, if we intersect this delta x0, xn with e2, n, then this, since this is injective and there is only one here in the middle, we will have that this is either K 2n plus 2, some, and 2k. Or 2k plus 1 over 2n plus 2. This, it's easy to calculate it. This will be 2k plus 1 over 2n plus 2. Okay? So, when we iterate, when we iterate this n plus 1 times, we will get one of these branches. This will be very, very... Uh, short, this will have length 1 over 2 to the n, and this will take this small interval into the whole interval 0, 1. Then we will have either here delta 0, delta 1, and this will go, this will have 
this will partition our small interval into one half. And so one, over the, one of the two halves will be this, but this is delta x0 xn plus one. And so we have obtained this statement by induction for the next case. And it is injective. It is injective because we have that e to the 2n plus 2. This has a length 1 over 2n plus 2. And so if we multiply it by 2n by 2, we will have an interval of length 1. And it will be injective. It will not wrap twice. Okay, it will wrap only once. Well, the same thing, oh, this is, this proves that H is well defined for the case E2 to the N. E2, sorry. We will do it for general F in a minute, but first we have to prove two more things. So we have to prove first H is well defined. is well defined. This we have proven for E2. Um, yes, we have proven it for E2. I will prove it for F. And then we have to prove that H is continuous. And then we have to prove that H is onto. And then we are done. Okay, so let me do it for general F. So for general F, not have this, we will not care about the length because we have already proven, what we have proven yesterday is that if we have two points Inside this, inside this, there, then they are equal. So yesterday we have proven that if this is non-empty, it is unique. But we have proved that we have to prove that it is non-empty. So the hints I gave you yesterday, we are going to do it. We have to prove that for all n, we have this. This is an interval. We don't care about the length, but all we know is that f to the n plus 1 of a n equals f to the n plus 1 of b n equals p. Remember, p was the fixed point. We already know that f, an expanding map, has a fixed point P, and F to the N plus 1 restricted to the interior of A and B N is injective. And so we will proceed in, we have to prove this by induction. For the first iterate, it's obvious. Remember, Remember that we have, there exists some Q, a unique Q, such that Q is different from P, and F of Q equals P. This, is, this Q is the one that plays the role of one half, okay? So, for the first iterate, we will have that delta X0 will be just PQ or QP. In any case, we will have that f of q and f of p are both p, and f of restricted to the interior is the whole interval minus, the, the minus p, okay? So let's assume that we have this for some n, and by the induction hypothesis, we have that this is injective. 
is injective, but it takes this whole interval in the, into the whole S1. So in particular, there will, a, there will be a unique Rn in the interior such that Fn plus 1 of Rn equals Q. Okay? There will be a unique one. And now, by the definition of degree, we will have that F n, well, then we take a n plus 1, b n plus 1, to be equal to either a n plus a n r n or r n b n. Okay? One of these two, depending on if, whether it is delta x0 or the other one. And then we will have that this uh, 2, no, fn plus 1, delta xn plus 1. This will yield us but now Fn plus two of AM plus one will be AN so or or RN so this will be Fn plus one of AN or Fn plus 1 of Rn. Uh, yes, no. F plus 2. So in any case, it will be F of Q or F of P. And the same This will be Fn plus 2 of either Bn or Fn plus 2 of Rn. In any case, this will be F of P or F of Q, which is P. So we will have that Fn plus 2 takes each of these extremes to P. But since this is degree 2, this is degree 2 and we have this Um, this is a n plus one. F n plus one here will take this into this, and so it will take f f n plus two will take each of these. F n plus two will take each of these into the whole interval. So we will have that Fn plus 2 restricted to either An, Rn or Rn, Bn. So we have that for each n, this is an interval. And we have proven it by induction. We are ready for the next step. Okay, so all, all we have to do is to identify the middle point such that it is the pre-image of Q. So in this way, we have proven that this is well-defined. Yesterday, we have proven that this is unique. We have proven that this is an interval, and yesterday, we have proven that it can have only one point. Now, we have to prove that it is continuous. And this is not hard to prove. Um, let me, we have to remember the metric in sigma two.
Okay. So, first of all, we have not proven it, but now maybe it's a time to prove it. We have for general, for general uh, F expanding, we will have that this Can you, this is, we have denoted this by this or by this. Can you give an estimate of the length of this interval? Remember that we had that F is expanding, so Well, we, we can estimate it. it it's, we have this, because F is expanding, but S is, continue, uh, S is compact, so we have a uniform bound for the derivative, okay? So if we take any two points inside this set, if we take any two points inside this set, uh, we know since if n is injective, but we also know that this is on two, okay? So if we take two points in this, we have that if n of x and if n of we have done this calculation yesterday. This belongs to the same x, delta xn for all n from 0 to n. But we have done it, if you remember, we have done this calculation. This is equal to f prime of some intermediate point times the length of Fn minus 1 and this is bounded from below by lambda but we can do this n times and so we will have that this is greater or equal than lambda n x minus y but we do this for all x and y. And so if we take the if we take the maximum here, we will have that for all x and y, this will be less or equal than this. And so we will have that the length of a n b n will be less or equal than the maximum length of this, which is less than one, because they are in the same delta x zero, so in particular they are in the same interval. So this will be less or equal than one over lambda to the n. Okay? We take the maximum here with x and y varying into a and b n. And so this will be less or equal than 1 over lambda n. So in general, we will have that this, the length of this, is less or equal than 1 over lambda to the n, where lambda is lower bound for the derivative of f. So why is that important to prove the continuity.
Okay, so now. We want to prove that H is continuous. In order to prove that H is continuous, we have to prove that if X is close to Y, then HX close to HY. But we have a measure for the closer closeness of X and Y. If They are close if they are equal for enough amount of entries, okay? This is y equals zero. If this, these are equal, then the distance of x and y is less than one over three to the n plus one, okay? On the other hand, if this happens, then for sure, X, X, HX and HY, since these two entries are equal for N iterates, they will both belong to this set. Because this is going to be equal You get it? So if these two are equal for n plus one entries, then they both will belong to this. So they will both will belong to a n b n. So h x and h y will be less than one over lambda n apart. Okay? So if you want this to be less than epsilon, you, it's enough to take large enough n, okay? So H is continuous. And now we have to prove that H is onto. Now we have to prove that H is on two. How, do you have any idea of how we do it? We have X in S1, and how do we get some X H to the minus one of X, if any? How do we get it? I think we have shown it. That's it. That's it. We have to follow the itinerary of X. Let's put Q here so delta zero and delta one are not the same size in general. But in any case, we will, for any X we take, we can decide whether it belongs to delta zero or delta one. And if it belongs to both, like in this case or this case, then we choose either one. But in any case, we will be able to choose one symbol. Okay? So we take X and we just decide whether X belongs to delta zero or delta one. And then we take F of X and we decide whether it belongs to delta zero or delta one, and so on. we will have at least one choice. And then so we take X, the itinerary of X, and we get a pre-image, okay? So H is onto. But the key 
problem that we will face in a minute is that, in general, it will be only onto. It will be not uh, injective. OK? OK. So let's, let's begin with the classification. So now we have a well-defined, we have proven the details, and we know that the, the, the problem the problem for our, for our age will appear precisely in these endpoints. And we have this, the drama that these endpoints are dense in our interval. So we will lose injectivity in a dense set. This is very strongly non-injective. But even so, we will be able to classify them all. We will be able to construct um, conjugacy between any two expanding maps. That is what we are going to do now. We're going to start. So what we are going to prove is that any expanding degree two map is a factor. This is the first theorem, and then this well, this, is, this theorem, we have proven it already. We have pro just proved this, but the theorem is that any two expanding maps will be conjugate. This is a consequence of this. But let us, uh, so let me state what we are going to prove now. We will have now any two expanding maps what's next so there exists some h which is a conjugacy OK. So let's first study the points of non-injectivity. This is because it's key. In the, in the points of injectivity, we will not have a problem. But in the, pro, in the, the, the situation is that we are going to compose. Remember that we had some HF and HG. And we are going to construct the conjugacy by doing this. But we have to, we have to show that this is a well-defined map, because this, in general, will not be a single point. And so what we have to do is that every time that this has a couple of green images, we can put them back into the same image. This is the whole proof. But in order to do that, we have to study the points of non-injectivity. So I, I am confusing H and H, F and H, G, but we have this. This is going to be our H. So let me put it in, in the blackboard how we should work with this. So to begin with, we are assuming that F is an expanding map of degree 2. And we are going to call HF the semi-conjugacy we have just obtained. And let's assume that we have two points, two different points that go to the same X. So what we are going to prove is that this is a pre-image of the periodic of the fixed point. So the points of non-injectivity are the pre-images of the fixed point. So this, if these two points, if it, this has two different pre-images, so there exists n such that.
all the points of non-injectivity are contained in the pre-images of P. But we will see that pre-images of P are dense, so this is not an easy, an easy problem. Yes, P is the fixed point. So how do we do this? Okay, so first, um, we have seen this in our induction hypothesis. We have proven that F is injective in the interior of the delta X zero. F is always injective in, not only, we have F is injective And in general, we have that Fn plus 1 is injective on An, Bn. So we have proven this a minute ago. This, uh, on the, this is, inter, uh, sorry, this is interior. This small zero, this is not a standard notation, so let me write it. It's injective on the interior. On the endpoints, it loses injectivity. But we all have also proven it a minute ago that in the boundaries, this goes to P. Indeed, delta X zero either one has an, 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 an endpoint as an endpoint P and Q. So f of p is p, f of q is p. So both go to p. So if we have x in the interior of either delta x0 or delta 0 or delta 1, we don't have any problem for the first thing both. If they, if they are if, the, if x is in the interior of delta zero or in the interior of delta one, then the symbol, the first symbol is unique. Okay? This is, no, there's no ambiguity. We have either to choose zero or one, and the symbol is unique. However, if, if we are in the boundaries, we have two choices. If we are talking about p or q, we, we can choose zero or one. So there we lose injectivity. So in the interior, there is no ambiguity, as we have just said. The problems be began in the boundaries. Uh, so let me see if I have. So here we have, if, if we are in the situations of the red dots, this. in the situation of the red dots, then here the first symbol is zero, here the first symbol is one. But here in the black dots, we can choose either one. For the second symbol, we will have this situation. If we're in the situation of the red dot, the second symbol will be zero. But if we are in this situation, the second symbol could be either zero or one because it's in the boundary of the second pre-image of delta x zero, okay? And so, well, here they are evenly distributed, but in general, they will not be evenly distributed. However, they will be dense because as we have seen, the length of each interval goes to zero, okay? So what about the points of non-injectivity? We are supposing that we have two different sequences that go to the same point, okay? And so let's, let's take the first integer so that they are different. You will have H of X is X, H of Y is X, 
And then we will have that x is x0, xn minus 1. And xn, let's say 0, and whatever. And then y will be equal. But here we will have a 1. OK? Well, what I claim is that if you reach to this situation, then what comes next has to be unique. You don't have two choices or many choices. You have only one choice if you want that these two points go to the same points. Who, who's next here? If, if, H, if you have that HX and HY goes to X, what has to come here? One, 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 zero, 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 zero. It's the only possibility. Why is that? We are going to prove it. This is intuitively clear, but we can prove it. Uh, we have this, and so this implies that HX and HY both belong to the intersection. This is because the same, the first n symbols are equal. So we have this. And we have that the first is different. So since the first is different, we have But this, inter this big intersection is the same, OK? Remember, this, this is this intersection is the same. So we will have that both here is an equal. They will belong not only to this intersection, but they will belong to f to the minus n delta 0 here. But since they are the same, they also will belong to f to the minus n delta 1. OK? But this is equal to f to the minus n delta 0 intersection delta 1. And what is this? We know exactly what this is. What's the intersection between delta 0 and delta 1? Q or P. So this is f to the minus n of P or Q. So this implies automatically uh, let me put it here. This implies automatically that f n of x is either p or q. So f n plus 1, here I should have put a big n. So f n plus 1. is P. Then we're done. So we could precisely prove that these are the pre-images of P. And it's an if and only if. It's easy to show that it, if it is a pre-image of P, then you, have, you can choose both symbols and we get um, what we want. OK. So here we have the theorem. We have already told you about this. If we have uh, two expanding maps with degree 2, then they are topologically conjugate. In particular, all are topologically conjugate to E2. We could do that, prove that every is conjugate to 
E2, but we are going to do choose any two, any two expanding maps and prove that they are conjugate. Conjugate or topologically conjugate is the same. So this is what I have just said. And so let's go into the proof. As I have told you, I, we will have, uh, let me do it. We have here E2 plus and the shift map. And for any expanding map, we have a semi-conjugacy HF. So here, if we have AG, AG. But now, HF is continuous onto, but it's not injective. However, we are going to prove that we can define HF composed with HG to the minus one, and that this will give us a homeomorphism. This is what we are going to do. So, how will we do it? The idea is what I have just told you. We are going to prove, we, we will take any, in the injective points there will be no problem because this will have a unique pre-image so that we have to prove it is continuous but it won't be a problem. But in the non-injective points, we have just proven that this is the pre-image of the periodic point. It's the pre-image, the nth pre-image of the periodic point. And so the periodic point, as we have just seen, it has exactly two pre-images. There's no secret here. So the two pre-images will be of this form. We will have the same digits at the beginning, then one will have a zero, the other will have a one, and then they will go one, 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 zero, zero, zero. So we will take a point of non-injectivity, we will have two pre-images, and then we have to prove that for, for the HF, these two pre-images go again to the same point, okay? And this will be a well-defined map. Then we have to prove that it is continuous and onto. Okay, so we have this, I have already I have already shown this. Uh, let me write it. F composed with HF equals HF composed with sigma. G composed with HG equals HG composed with sigma. And, well, I put it exactly the opposite of what we, we wanted. So we will go to do HG composed with with HF to the minus one, okay? So this will give us, uh, this will give us a map here to here. H will be HG composed with HF to the minus one. So, well, I will have only five minutes, so let's, just prove that it is well defined and then we will go on next class. So, if it consists of a single point, it's obvious that it is well, it is well defined, okay? It's not, not a problem. So let's assume that it is not, does not go in, have a unique pre-image. Then we have this, we have two points, let's put it F here, F here, and so we will have this. We will have two pre-images. 
for the same point. And we will have that for some n, this goes to the fixed point. And so, as we have just proved, for some iterate of the shift map, we will have, as we have done here, if we take shift n of x, we will have all ones or all zeros. This is mandatory because they have to go to the same point, okay? We have just proven this, in fact. We will either have to have all zeros or all ones. Because if, if we didn't have all zeros or all ones, we would have that, let me, let me prove it here. If we didn't have all zeros or all ones, we would have one. This will be part of the sequence, or this will be part of the sequence. Okay? So this would imply that for some n, for some n, so some k, uh, for some k greater or equal than n, this, which is p, would belong to delta 0, 1 or to delta 1, 0. Okay? But let me draw this picture. We have delta 0, delta 1, and we have delta, delta, Delta zero one is this, and delta one zero is this. Okay, but p does not belong to this. Is that clear? I mean, if we we want to show that shift n of x is either a sequence of zero or a sequence of ones. In order to do that, we have to prove that this subsequence is avoided. It's not allowed. And why is that? It's because if it were allowed, then we would have that this is either in this set or in this set. But this set, P is not in either of these sets. So it has to be here or here, and that's, this implies that they are only zeros or ones. So let me finish with this so that we go on tomorrow. This is a contradiction. And so um, we have the first n such that alls are 0 and alls are 1. And the previous one is 0 or 1. And these all are, I changed notation, so here I, I put a 2. I put a 2. This is the situation. Okay, so uh, I don't know if I want, this will take some time. It's easy, but it will take some time. I, I, I think I will let it for tomorrow so that we can do it uh, easily. But let me just tell you, we will have this situation and this, the, the idea will be that we will have, everybody will be equal up to some point and then at one point, one will belong to here and the other will belong to here. But after the point falls here, all are ones. And after the point comes here, all are zeros. So they will converge to the, same, to the same point. In the intersection of all intervals, we will get the, the same point, which will be either a Q or a P. Okay? And that will, the Q, the PF, the PG, or the QG. But let me do it more easily tomorrow. We go, we go on tomorrow then. Thank you so much.